So yeah, let's get started. Uh, and uh, to start with, uh, Karuna reminded this. So all the girls, beautiful women uh, on this set, I wish you a very happy Women's Day. Thank you, same to you. Thank you, same to you. I, uh, actually, I have a very different opinion. Huh? I think Women's Day is every day, so <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Thank you, Mahindra, for that. So let's get started. Let me share my screen. Okay. Um, so the last that uh, the last session that we had, uh, let me know if you're able to see my screen. And if, yeah, I think you can. Okay. Am I audible? Uh, yes, perfect. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So. The last time that we discussed about was uh, we looked at uh, last Friday, that is, we looked at certain examples of uh, how, uh, you know, there are uh, user experiences and in reality, there is a match between uh, the real world and the systems, right? And we looked at some very interesting examples. I can see there are few examples that have got added. Uh, however, uh, you know, we will take those in the Friday session. Okay, so because this is something that we decided that Tuesday sessions uh, and because we had holy, we've moved it to Wednesday. So these sessions are going to be more about looking at the next principle. So let's do that, uh, right? And we'll come back and look at all examples that are uh, left out. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. So the next one that we uh, get started, which is the th third principle. Now I've been thinking about different ways of handling this. Okay, let me just put this in a presentation mode. Uh, how, you know, I was just thinking about um, uh, collecting uh, and bringing up the uh, related heuristics together. Uh, but then, you know, I thought, you know, it is all right if we go even in the series, because it really becomes, uh, easier for anybody to recall it at a later point key you know which is the first usability which is the second one which is the third one so that relatability if you have to really run down the path in the future it becomes easier so i'll not break that uh, the only thing that we could just stack two of those together so today's session we can look at the third one and the fourth one uh, fourth principle uh, both of those together okay so the third one that uh, it states is that um if we can uh, give an analogy here, right? So you uh, are walking through, uh, say, you know, you're through in your college or you're in, you know, just walked into a uh, new institute and uh, you are, you know, you're figuring out where the principal's uh, office is and you're figuring out where the staff room is and you're, you know, looking for cert certain sections in the school class and you open the door and suddenly you realize, oh, I am in the wrong place, right? Oh, and then what you do is just shut the door and you're back. So you know how to get out, right? That is the easiest one. Uh, now imagine that you did not know, you know, if there is a place that you just can enter, you know, something more like uh, typically these more entertaining kind of spaces where you probably walk into and there is this maze or, uh, you know, these uh, some of these places where you have uh, ghosts coming out and all of those so i don't know what these four places are called but you know then you have typically people enter but you don't know how to exit you have to go through the whole route imagine how you feel sometimes you'd feel anxiety right you don't want to be here now that is again a far-fetched one right if we come back to more like an ui ux problem something similar if you can keep that as a context is i'll come back to this poster but the first thing that you comes to your mind is oh no i want to i don't want to do this i don't want to continue to do this uh, there is some reason that i want to abandon this path okay so that is the first thing that you would want to do okay second would is i want to go back right so i came from here but uh, yeah this is fine this is good i like this information now i want to explore more what was there in the previous page that i was looking at or the previous space that i was looking at how do i go back right that is another third is that i did something i want to correct this okay so that is your undo method and we've understood undo for a long time uh here so 
uh, of course this is not a real world term but it is a more digital term but yeah undo is something that it is part of our lives now so we understood understand that so how is how is in your user uh, interface that you allow uh, one to just abandon what they are doing it could be a stepped kind of a process right without any confusion without any ambiguity will i be able to abandon from where i have uh, you know in wherever stage that i am in can i go back now these are if you look at it these are different things right what is abandoning it means that you are already in something you have gone a few steps ahead probably in your process now i want to exit it okay so that is one another is i just want to go back just want to one step go back that is it undo is what just correcting it okay and now when you say undo it could be multiple steps also that come you know comes into play that i want to just correct what i have done this is recently one step back one more step back and then so on right so these are different things so so if you know if this says that you know there is emergency exit that you would want to have and there are certain examples that they have given right you know support undo and redo show i'm i'm referring to these tips show clear way to exit the current interaction by cancel button and make sure the exit is clearly labeled and discoverable and all of that right so yes this poster covers a lot uh, but then there is a lot of things um, and scenarios that we have to also take care about because there are different user interfaces and to make things simpler designers assume that th there are different ways of approaching and we look at it okay okay any thoughts questions until here and please be vocal about it there is nothing which is a wrong question or a reflection okay i'll move now um okay so the first one we spoke about is that i just want to go back okay and this is not the abandon one but this is just an example of i want to just go back now if you look at this and something that research says that users are used to using the back button of the browser okay now this is a very important aspect that as designers we have to also always remember now if you look at it the this uh, principle that i have picked up i have directly refer, i'm directly referring it to uh, user interfaces the previous two principles that we looked at i took a lot of uh, real life examples uh, however here uh, more than real life examples because in real life there are not a lot of scenarios that i can really relate to but in user interfaces there are a lot of aspects that you have to be uh, aware about so i am going to be directly talking about user interfaces here okay in this in, re in reference to this principle so to the point that um, as a default interaction of users users are traveling through your uh, application and they are completing certain tasks or they are discovering uh, the site uh, or the application right on a desktop kind of an experience okay or it could be mobile devices tablet devices all of that right other devices what is important is that they have a um, typical in whichever browser they are um, accessing this uh, they they will always want to access a back back from using the browser okay now this is something that we have to remember as designers because where does it really clash or conflict is imagine that in the interface the experience that you're giving is that certain and you've seen in some of these uh, uh you know e-commerce sites also that you select uh, uh you know you want to just select something and be uh, just preview it what it does is this one will open as a separate tab right any object that you select opens as a separate tab did the user realize that it opened on a separate tab did the system tell the user that it opened on a system uh, a different tab no okay so what has happened what happens is user selected it opened uh, it is shown the user the preview of that 
object really because of that and now uh, the user wants to select some other object right in in the in this list that uh, she seen what happens in that case is she will first go and look at the bag and that is when she will see oh it is disabled why because there is no bag available you you have opened this preview on a separate tab altogether okay now as per the principle and as as per the rule that is stated is that do not open multiple tabs because the user doesn't uh, you know register that there is a different tab this information is opening on a different tab okay now there are pros and cons you have you know you taken a decision of opening information on a different tab because you think the user is going to be needing it to compare and come back easily right so therefore there are reasons that you have taken the decisions okay now then it becomes very important that you do not compromise with those decisions but how do you still inform the user that oh by the way whatever you're now going to be clicking is going to be opening on a different tab right if you're able to communicate that to the user at least it is you know somewhere we are trying to safeguard that uh right so that is one any thoughts questions on that have i uh, uh, i'm sorry i really could not really bring a lot of screenshots but uh, let me because you know i had and this is something that i want to tell you but there is some far um, issue in my society um, uh, and uh, I, uh, there were some screenshots that I wanted to really take, but it could not. And just 15 minutes before this uh, session, the bar came back. So in case there are things that go wrong, uh, uh, please hold on, be part of the meeting. I'll join back um, through my hotspot. Okay. So let me just open this. And um, let's look at some things here. Okay. So... Okay, I will say carpets and I click on a carpet. Now imagine now the when I'm selecting this as a user, this opened as a separate tab. I could not go back. Okay, I wanted to go back to the result. I did not know that this opened on a separate tab. Now we being people who are used to online shopping, we realize oh this works like this. Okay, and we will go. So we we will really keep and the advantage here is of course you know I want to I want to compare between this carpet and the other carpet it becomes really simpler. How can you just inform the user by the way that this is going to be opening on a separate tab is I think a good adequate information enough. Okay. Now how does what are the other conflicts overlays okay which are pop up layers over your main parent window what happens then i don't know if there is a pop-up that will open here but you know i would want you to imagine that on your parent window there is an overlay that has appeared and if you users see you know clicks on this browser back what it is going to be doing is it is going to be taking you one step back on your parent correct page so it is really from a user standpoint the user just expected this pop-up layer to overlay to close. That is not what is going to happen. It's not going to be going one step back, but it's going to be going two steps back, right? So again, that is a mismatch in the expectation of the user and the, how the system is doing this. So that is how the browser back is still conflicting with the overlay. Imagine that the overlay is a full screen, okay? So it is further more critical here that the user just requested for one single back i would just want to go one step and the user doesn't realize it's a full screen and it is an overlay if your close button and your back button uh, is not clear right a user as i said typically they are going to be using the back how do you handle that okay so right you have to work with your development team to see to it that it is handled in that manner another is you we have seen on our mobile devices imagine that you know you've clicked on this and this is on a full screen and you want to you know you see oh i want to look at some similar objects so you will just swipe right left to look at similar objects right or you're looking at news there are these news apps you if they are giving a synopsis a small summary of information <clears throat> you click on it 
and then it you know it will give you one card of information and you can just navigate between cards so i want to just go back to the previous card but what it is really doing is not going back to the previous card but it is going back you know to the list or something like that right so that is again where it is going to be conflicting so there there are different ways of how you come up with a solution or when you are designing this you see to it that you take care of some of these things right but be cognizant of the fact that the browser back button which the user would use most of the time is going to clash with some of these things right so while we are saying yes uh, you know because user wants to come out quickly right and this is how it is going to be clashing all right so the next in this uh, pointer is um, this is about um, uh, the point that we said that okay i want to abandon okay now imagine that you are doing some kind of uh, financial your know, work and it's a step by step process probably you are transferring some funds or you are completing a form and then could you transferring and things like that okay and you do a few steps and it's a new app you've never worked on it imagine that you're paying your uh, child's uh, fees and you are taking some help of some of their apps okay not really greatly designed and all of that and you're doing it for the first time and most of us would have experienced through this what happens during that time is that uh, you're not sure you know if you want to continue with this process and you're thinking about certain other things and say oh no but I'll, instead of you know something like this i'll try to do it some other way or probably use some other account and things like that so i might want to you know get out of this abandon this process okay this is abandoning now when i if this is a cross that is going to be abandoning or this is a back back would this take me one step back in the process in the uh, in the form what is this going to be doing is this going to be canceling my process or is this going to be retaining the information and still closing uh, the form right so there are a lot of questions in the mind of the user what is going to be really done so it becomes the responsibility of the designers to see to it that the users would uh, you know you have to really be able to answer those questions uh, appropriately in your user, user interface and these are things that the users will expect okay <clears throat> all right okay so <clears throat> any questions uh, in reference to both of these uh rupali so i have a question uh, the overlay and full screen overlay so the overlay is basically uh, the tool tips and those things overlay um, i no uh, I, I was talking about you know a translucent more like an overlay uh, about which is you can consider a drop down but then uh, more than that more yeah so drop down also can be considered an overlay but you know somewhere where it is not a full screen okay you probably your confirmation messages or your small forms or small forms that you have some kind of a translucent background and things like that mm -hmm. these also other than some of your layered drop downs okay. okay so there are hided information uh, uh, in the overall layer more than see what we are talking about here you are talking in reference to the previous screen right here you are saying right mm -hmm. see what i am trying to say here is that one thing that we have to understand that the research says okay the research says that people use the browser previous mm -hmm. that is something that you have to always remembering remember while you are designing your application when do you want to really remember it the most is when you are designing for any information to open as a separate tab mm -hmm. any information that is going to be opening in an overlay which is going to be something that i cannot really click on anything else on the previous screen okay and if i don't find that close button very clearly accessible user is going to be clicking on this previous pack okay if it's a full screen overlay and that exit is not clearly displayed the user is expect no most probably going to be using the previous time 
Okay. See, we cannot really control. Mm -hmm. We took, we placed the close button prominently. हम लोगों ने तो उसको label भी कर दिया, right? And these are things that we will definitely do. You will put an exit. You will put a close button. You will put a cancel button. All of that, right? On your overlays. But still, the user may just click on the previous button. Okay, on the browser, right? So mm -hmm. what happens when it is clicking on the previous button and your overlay is there? They would expect that this overlay will close up and it will take you to the parent. But that is most of the times what happens is it will consider this parent ka jo page hai uska back ho jayega. Basically, it's uh, uh, yes, uh, it's uh, hmm. back to the previous page. Back to the main yeah. previous page. Main Correct. Previous. Correct. So these are things. So when you're thinking about these concepts, you have to see to it while you're designing or you're testing your products. These are things that you have to think about. What happens when the user is good? And we cannot say that you. Ah, why will the user use the previous button? I have done prominently. So cancel. Diya hai. Yahan pe close diya hai. Let's not go into that track. No, you can't really do these arguments because it is nature. It is default nature yes. that. Yeah, that has been created. Okay. Okay. Any more thoughts? Thanks for being for being that. So, what is your suggestion for this conflict? What will the really, uh, yeah, hmm. really yeah. Your, your suggestion to Correct. resolve the issue? Okay. Now there are certain suggestions that I have, but it completely is based on how what are we designing the context. Okay. Now for the first one, for example, right, when you're going to be opening things on a separate tab, I think there are icons that suggest that okay, you're going to be opening this information on a separate tab. So when you show that information, then at least the user you've communicated to the user that this is just not going to be loading on the same page, but it is going to be opening on a separate tab. Right? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Another is uh, when we are doing an overlay, or the, I'll talk about these both of these, you have to work with your development team. Okay, you have to work with your development team and communicate to them uh, that, uh, you know, uh, the user could expect a back and go to the previous page, not and close this uh, uh, overlay. Now, what happens with that overlay is if the user is in the midst of something and they're going to be losing in information, if they have filled information, you might want to have a again a confirmation that would you want to you know abandon what you're doing and uh, just click on that previous and just not close that, right? So that they just you know just realize that you know they are going to be missing out on information. You're not completed that task. Actually, close it works like a back button there. If I close the uh, overlay window, it will always go to the back window. Correct. And imagine that user is not clicked on the close, but they have clicked on the back. OK, then we have to design that not exactly. the Get design, uh, new design kind of thing, like without a okay. uh, browser independent. So we can do the new design, and we can See, uh, it is going to be r remove the back button. See, they, what I'm saying, trying to say here is the users are going to be using their natural way to navigate through your product. You cannot force and make them learn, even if they learn, of course. Uh, still, they are going to be using certain things naturally. They are going to be using the previous this previous from the browser. So I am saying, wo to wo karne hi wale hai. How do you then design your solution considering that the user is going to be using the previous button? That is how we have to think. So when you're designing and when you're doing a testing of the product that is you know, part of the feature that is being implemented and developed and all of that, this becomes an important aspect uh, to really test
and based on what the user is going to be losing or can the user close this and come to this and there is no information that is lost and just bring them user back to the uh, previous page are decisions that has have to be taken it is completely contextual again what are you displaying on that overlay or the full screen overlays Correct. Something similar when you are doing it for devices, which are smaller de handheld devices, you would want to then if you have swipes that you've given, uh, what happens when the user clicks on that devices previous, right? In that uh, devices, uh, whatever that uh, uh, the back button, system, back button mm. right? Mm. So what happens then? Then these are decisions that you have to take during design and design it in an appropriate manner. yeah all right so any thoughts questions ideas on this example where we are saying abandon uh user should be able to abandon without having any kind of an ambiguity that oh am i going to be losing information is this going to be saving information what happens when i click on the previous or what happens when i click on the close right and we do the things differently right we've we've seen that you know we say okay we'll give you steppers we'll give you something which suggests that you're on the first step and then your second step and your third step but then are, are you in your uh, context are you going to be allowing for the user to go previous it can information on the previous page be changed uh, does that impact on the information on the next tabs all of these decisions you'll have to take also see to it that the user would want to have the control to be able to abandon the process at any point of time let the user do that and if there is any loss of information communicate to the user right so these are more like natural ways that these three are the natural ways that the user would expect the product to work in uh you know uh, the, them them to interacting with the product and the product to be able to uh support these interactions so these are more natural ways how people really operate to pali can i give the two examples to yeah. remember this yes please okay. so for this user control and the freedom this is actually very very important in our ux right so two things you remember in your mind, like how to understand this one. Do you remember when you are sending Gmail to your participant, then after sending, you feel, oh, I want to recall it back because I forgot yeah. to add this contents or maybe participant or maybe something else, like subject line, you wanted to change it. And the Gmail send the message. It's a very small, uh, it's a micro interaction actually. It says like undo. Okay, if you want to send it or you don't want to send it, something the message was there, and you immediately say undo, don't send it. Okay, so that is the control and the freedom you are getting back, and you are doing making the changes into that. Okay, and the second example I would like to mention here, you know, you check your uh, laptop and there is a brightness button. Assume that that there is a night time, you are increasing your brightness, and if it is a daytime, you are reducing. That's the freedom you are getting it, and you are in the control. Is is that good to understand the example? It is good to remember in your mind. Yes. Thank you. Even I have seen the Swiggy. If I ordered something, they have some uh, one minute window. So I have already placed the order and uh, uh, already paid for that order. So they have given immediately given one minute window, so I can cancel the order. And I can make change and I can give the order again one second. So before that, it was not there. So before that, I have still remember if I given any order. Uh, so it will be not there, any window there. So what I have given, it's already placed the order. And I have to take that one. So nowadays, they have yeah placed one minute window though. So buffer time. So I can cancel the order. I can change something and I reorder something. Yeah, that Great. is good. So now yeah. imagine if that is uh, what we have spoke just now, Rupali has sh uh, shared those examples with the visuals and which I have mentioned and the Ambalika has mentioned. Let's assume that that is not, it's in the real scenario. 
how much frustration, how much overwhelming you might be feeling, or how much the negative experience you might be speaking with other people. And this is our job as being a designer. We should help our user to let them feel that they are in the control and they are free to take their actions. And that's why even the, if you remember the screen, um, uh, we are changing the screen, we said the screen, which is, we like it, that preferences are there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Aruna and Abalika. Great examples. Uh, so what uh, the most important aspect that we have to you know remember here and let me just bring up uh, the last screen i think uh, in reference to this yeah so uh, now uh, here also uh, like uh, you know this principle in uh, like other in uh, some other principles also we saw you know follow some uh, certain universal standards of being able to exit certain things okay there are already digital patterns that have been created for a long time now but there could be different scenarios that your product has and so you have to really be careful enough to uh, decide and design those right um, okay another aspect to this is when you are exiting okay you would want to exit certain things um, or cancel certain things what are the icons that you are using Right, just because it is a K twelve kind of environment, uh, would you change things? You know, completely different. You have taken a strong theme for an interface. Probably it is an eatery that you are creating an application for, or some kind of you know, some kind of a different strong theme, and you have selected icons and all of that. How much would you just experiment with icons? You sh ideally should not, right? Because uh, as uh, as we spoke about. If you want to really cancel something, now if you order something wrong, if it is related to food, you want to just you decided, oh no no, this is really picking up things from a a place which is really far off and is going to be taking more than forty five minutes or something like that. Oh, I I want to cancel this, right? Is that visual representation of being able to cancel it? Uh, you know, placed in the right place. You know, is it proximal enough for the user to take decisions? right all of that so the position of that is important the iconography that is already standard there are universal standards so think you know consider all of these things um another thing is provide undos and redos for sequential actions right if you are like we've seen you all of us have worked in photoshop and xd and all of that other um, softwares so you're aware and a lot of other products also where you are doing certain tasks sequentially and therefore you would want to have an undo also in that reference right uh, so and with this this, this would be multiple undos and redos so uh, if you are say uh, you have a word processor more like a text editor you would want to have an undo redo if you have more like a canvas kind of an experience um, and that is where you know like photoshop and things like that you would again want to have multiple and those redos and that is something that is again naturally users expect it to be there okay also you know there is control z that people are used to right uh, and uh, that is a keyboard control that is there in your application will you be able i'm not saying this is should be considered everywhere again right so if there are laws that you can put in design and say okay everywhere this has to be there then life would have been really simple but that is not so take your judgment see to it you know okay in this kind of an environment probably control z also will be able to you know for the power users they'll be able to exit through this right so take your decisions but see to it see if you know you can also support with key, uh, key uh, keyboard shortcuts um uh -huh. this is again very interesting okay now what we have seen and even the example that karuna gave right we have seen that google does this on the snack bars they give certain kind of actions that you can um undo right now if you imagine how many people would really refer to that left bottom and whoever has studied <coughs> layouts <clears throat> as compositions would know that typically people start start from left top and travel to the right 
okay that is how there is a z z kind of a reading habit that is there so when i if i you see my cursor this is how people read typically right this is how the z is and it completely depends if this is yours wherever wherever your landing is now this is these spots are lesser accessible spots right now google what google has done is they show all their snack bars here if that is an information just to show success or some kind of an information that this is processing all right it is just for reference but imagine that you have taken an action and in an email and you have wrote it to wrong participants and you want to correct that and you just you know how far is trans you know for you to really come to this undo and in that snack bar it is just going to go that snack bar is going to be out in a few seconds right it is going to be disappearing on a few seconds is that a good experience my anxiety is as a user is going to be definitely high i definitely need if there is has undo that has to be there please position it in a manner that the user has control not some snack bars or something that the user do not have to just time times out right they don't have control so see to it that if there is an undo that is there that you have placed place it in a banner that the user can control it pause om prakash any thoughts on not only this but the overall aspect about user control and freedom in this context Am Prakash, is there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any reflections, thoughts, or uh, something that you recall from any product that that they have done it really well, or something that is not done? Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, keep continue. So whenever it is possible, I keep that. Sure. Anybody else? Uh, Priyanka, any thoughts on this aspect? Yeah, I. Uh... I want to give an example, but I am not sure is it uh, this fall into this principle or not. So in uh, Swiggy, I have seen uh, they have that cancel uh, cancel order option, but in uh, Zomato, uh, like in uh, within sixty seconds, to uh, you can you know, cancel the order, but in Zomato, you doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. So is that like uh, being this is a user control and freedom uh, that fall into this principle? Yeah. it would isn't it because you know you might want to change your decision and user will want to control the decision that they have taken yeah yeah and that is what ambalika mentioned if you sometime back that you know she is already happy that swiggy has brought this as a feature because it gives her control so mm -hmm. i think uh, zomato will gradually also pick up that any other example yeah yeah priyanka go ahead no no uh, it also uh, can be related to error prevention because you are not showing any error and uh, if you are you, you want to cancel or you are canceling no say that again sorry i did not understand it also relate to the error prevention principle error prevention error prevention could be somewhere where you say you know um error prevention could be you know where you want to go back right so here when we saw right um, that uh, user would click a back and if you have overlays and user doesn't use the close button of the overlays or in the act where they are uh, you know using swipes uh, in the devices and they click on the browser back uh, they are going to be landing up on a screen that they don't did not want it to be you know on right so in a way it is when you uh, have adequate information if you handle this properly you are you are seeing to it that the user is not experiencing an error okay 
Okay, I have an example for uh, uh, user control. And I think this is very common in e-commerce sites, like especially when you go to something like an Amazon. Uh, let's say you put something into a cart. You now you have uh, typically got two options. One is to continue with the shopping or uh, continue to make payment. So as a user, you are also being given a control to uh, take two different paths. So this is helpful for the user to kind of avoid any, uh, like imagine if you have to go, you are directly taken to a shop cart, then you come again, come back, then you start searching for another product. Again, you are taken to the shop cart. So all that can be avoided by just having this option for the user. So I think that that is a, uh, for me, a good uh, example of uh, user control. Not in terms of something which can be avoided, but rather as a path forward. You're giving user an option to take two different paths. One more example in the reference to what you just you said, right? That okay, you start, um, and that is how I do uh, generally online shopping. Is I start, uh, I uh, I end up creating a lot of um, uh, what do you say? Those like lists, right? And then I get confused at which is where, which where, where is what what I added. So what I typically do is I put everything in the cart. Uh, thankfully, I don't do um, payments uh, because then my cart is full. Okay, and then I go to the cart and then I feel that okay, uh, I don't need this. Then I compare again and all of that. Then I put it back to the like list. You know, one of those selected uh, lists. Okay, that I'll in the future uh, somewhere I. But I've really narrowed down on certain things. Uh, but I don't want to, you know, probably purchase it right now. So that is where it is allowing me to remove things from my cart but not completely um you know not have it anywhere so it is allowing me to you know shop uh, order it for later or shop later uh, save it for later i think it is called and uh, it just gets added in one of my like lists i think so that's another way that okay it is giving me a, i am in a journey of purchase and i have taken a decision to remove certain things and so it is giving me that control right so i want to remove certain things here so it is giving me that control to do that or pick, removing uh, things or moving it to some other list i have a, a yeah experience on that as well just say dmart mein hum log uh, products add karte hai you do all the payments and you choose to like i will pick up from some uh physical store correct yeah suppose maybe they have given that uh, add items you can do it later suppose you missed few items and you can add those limited items back to that same order you seeing in a physical environment mm -hmm. physical or you choose to like get it delivered but mm -hmm. once you have done the payment or you choose you have chosen oh, okay. cash cash on delivery still your product is placed but still it is giving that feature to add uh, the orders uh, the products which you missed in that order you can add it to the same order list same order yeah got it also there is no uh, maximum limit to it but once first order, there is some limits like 500 and above and 1000 and above. Okay. For items which we have missed, has no limits. Got it. Okay. All right. Anything else uh, in reference to this? Do we have Ashok on the store? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Thoughts? Mm, thoughts mean I have one example, like real world example. Like if uh, we use ATMs, there is a button like if we found, uh, like entered some uh, wrong in uh, data 
into the system there is a, a button uh, name uh, exit or uh, cancel so th this is the i think uh, a great example for this particular uh, heuristic yeah correct so yeah um, you're right uh, ashok but uh, these are more straight this is more a straightforward example right what you just stated now yeah. exit and cancel how you position it uh, what is going to exit and cancel do does the user know it and yeah, as in, are the is the user able to relate what it is going to do yeah i think so because everybody who know uh, who uses the atms who knows right the buttons in front of him are been uh, used as per his requirement so uh, there is straightforward uh, red button for uh, uh, cancel and yellow button for exit so correct I, yeah yeah okay got it okay all right so i have left a few slides here uh, which you know you can put as examples and on friday's call we are going to be looking at those let's move on to the next one which is consistency and standards i think all of us understand this right because as ui designers in our experiences this is what something that we have been taught to do is bring you know define what your design approach is and when we start designing we start with something where we start defining it what is my going to be my font what is going to be the colors that i'm going to be using what is what is which color going uh which what is each of this color going to be communicating to the user and if you're going to be using branding colors and all of that which you know how you're going to be defining their palette and uh, uh, iconography and all of that right so one part of it is the visual design aspect another part of it is that your ui patterns that are there right across your product you're going to be using similar ui patterns for similar interactions right now that is the second part so first we just spoke about visual styling that is the first layer second layer we spoke about interactions and things like that fourth thing is positions right where do you place things now within your product view you would want to have a con consistency uh how where you position things where do you put a filter uh right where you put a filter all my filters are on the left hand side or all my filters are on the top or i have a distribution of filters on the left hand side and on the top side what do you place on the right hand side uh, right is it sub information to the main information is there going to be a sub navigation that i place somewhere where is that sub navigation is going to be placed so the position part of it right so you what we saw here is that we again i'll just go back a few steps back is we said okay there is going to be a standardization in the way i define my visual design my interaction design the layouts that are there right in my product if you have a suite of products which is probably a platform that you have may not be a platform but you have um, you have a series of products that are there that are probably correlated not related but you would want to typically uh under and, and they come under your one umbrella okay whatever those products are then you would have those standards and consistency across all of your products okay now when you talk about that this is about internal okay now how this principle is broken typically is that it is an in, internal standardization and there is an external standardization and consistency what does internal is all that i just said right within your product and within the suite of your products right you would want to have a consistent behavior experience patterns all of that contribute to that then it is the external consistency and standards what does external consistency and standards is other products outside right we look at the swiggy we spoke about say travel uh, apps uh, we could talk about a lot of ticketing apps and things like that right so a lot of or uh, gmail and uh, drive space and things like that right so the all of those are external your user is 
using a lot of products and they are making a sense of all of those products they learn somewhere they try to use that knowledge of theirs to handle other products right and whenever they find some kind of inconsistency there is a, a space of relearning that happens that is that stage of relearning of this app ah ye maine dusre application mein ye kiya lekin ye application mein kuch to alag hai they are also making a decision is this better or was that better right so there is some amount of um, time and effort and cognitive load that you are using from that user is it worth it is it valuable is a decision that you have to take okay so going back a few steps how do you remember this is there is internal and external consistency okay just to keep some keywords consistency as standards but don't forget there is internal consistency and standardization and there is an external consistency and standardization okay when we say consistently we spoke about some of these things there has to be a consistent behavior ui patterns have to be consistent color con connotations well, what is color connotations mean right if color con connotations it means is that okay if your primary buttons which are going to be your call to action buttons we are you are completing a task that those buttons are probably say blue in color right now does that mean that is my interaction and if that blue is used to just highlight some some text somewhere else will the user consider that blue and say oh this is and it is static content there is some kind of a confusion here right so color connotations what are you using just to highlight things versus what are you asking the user to interact with is something if you have color connotations for your user interface you have to see to it that you don't mix and use things again if i can give i typically keep going back to k12 is because sometimes to make it kid you know kid ready kids ready and something that is very uh, interesting to look at some of these laws get broken which is not a good thing so while you use a lot of colors for uh, apps for k12 see to it that your color connotations are something that you still control uh in throughout your product okay uh, again we spoke about layouts and positions when we are talking about layouts and all of these points that you see here right think about internal as well as external so again even you are saying say e-commerce sites or say it is some stock libraries that are there right where would you typically expect a search to be where would you typically now see when i'm asking this question you just start imagining you know where it will be it will be somewhere at the top somewhere at the center probably somewhere on the left is but you know somewhere you know that this the layout and positions are consistent across products and that is just to simplify the users uh, uh, you know just like right so if there is a profile access to profile uh, where would you typically keep it if there is a logo that you have to place where would you typically keep it right uh, things like that more about your product okay just some tertiary information not even secondary information tertiary information not just for information where would you typically keep that information probably somewhere at the bottom somewhere hidden layer and things like that right so there are certain standards that are established across which are external and some some of those are internal also uh, so be uh, again uh, uh you know cognizant of the fact that users are expecting simple patterns so just to keep it simple right so that is there instructions and content right again internal external consistency what do you call something how would you explain certain things to the user right if um, that is there right then you have your content how do you place content on your uh, product uh, uh, how do you display it uh, in the product things like that now another you you would say you see if everything is going to be so consistent and standard then what is that i have as a designer that i am getting that space where i can have my creativity or i want to do something different right and there could be drastic improvements that you are doing with the user experience i keep giving an example of google pay right 
now if whoever has used that google pay would say that oh uh, the experience that i have substantially improved when i started using google pay it was so simple right now that is a drastically drastic improvement that uh, exponential i would say more than drastic exponential improvement that as an experience that they have done that's a different thing altogether right uh, however uh, if your product doesn't need that kind of uh, you don't have that big as a solution that is going to be completely uh, discarding everything which is consistent and standard then it is all right uh you do that carefully but otherwise if you are doing and using patterns and layouts and all of that if your information as simple and you don't have a, a tech or and a us solution which is drastically great stick to standards okay uh again context and users vary uh, across external products so um context is different right you are doing educational products somebody is doing e-commerce and they are selling clothes things are different your users are completely different they are teachers and they come here for some certain things they are students and the content creators and things like that. so you still have that space of where you don't want to you know definitely stick to standards and you might want to do it differently because your spaces needs to be handled in a different way but see to it that naturally what are these patterns that users are used to um yeah and therefore we are saying most interactions here should be predictable right that the user should not really have to learn every time and keep have to wonder that you know where should i find this information and that i'm looking at what this interaction that i'm looking for so when you're saying consistency and standards if you look at that uh, if you look at it at least at a if you look at it at a superficial level it is just having consistency and standards in your product and uh, outside the product and you can just keep it just at a layer of say visual design and layouts and things but there is more to it how do you control uh, okay why did i miss out okay so therefore you know in your systems it becomes important that you have design systems in place you have design guidelines in place uh, therefore what happens is the way you are doing um, designing and your development of uh, internally becomes something that you take decisions once and you are able to follow standards that are there so that is uh, very important always always see to it that your users are just not using your application right so probably they are spending uh, think about it the least amount of time on these applications but then casually they are using so many of different applications so understand and study what are those applications that they are using what is something that is um, trending as an experience uh, and there is a lot of inspiration that you can take when you want to take a drastic decision so while we are saying consistency and standards are important consistency and standards are not only important in your domain but look outside from okay from your domain because your users are using a lot of different variety of applications and you have to understand typically uh, if your user is from a specific location what are they exposed to how are they shopping and what are the applications that they are trending and using and all of that so how can i uh, see to it that eventually i can bring some of those experience and if i can okay yeah what arup How would you reflect that? Any good bad experiences? Right now, I can't. Uh, no problem. Okay. No problem. No problem. I am sure there will be good, good examples that you will yes, add yes. into the series. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Arup, when okay. we are working together on, I think. Uh, devops application yes 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 so we created the screens which are have the consistency so when we right. are putting the tabs or the contents those right. are matching right. with the previous table structures etc yes exactly so those are the consistency okay right. Right. and also we have experience for the accessibility point of view which is which rupali has mentioned about the color so when we select any particular color we should ensure that 
that is not only for the visually uh, uh, the, the having the limitation or the normal people. It, it should be consistent. That's why we Correct. talk here about that accessibility. Can... Yeah, accessibility, that color we check. Why we check that color? Because it should be consistent okay. for everyone. Yes, yes. OK, these are the basic things like consistency that we have used the heading structures and the uh, or the icons we have used uh, and what are the effects whenever we are hovering on the icons or particular on any uh, text links or something on the buttons that should be a same thing that uh, keep in mind perfect i'm so consistent yes perfect. yeah yeah we're not what I don't have now actually, but I, I understand actually. Okay. Okay. Your voice is pretty low. Yeah, it's low. No, no, I don't have right now the examples, but uh, I understand you actually. You have. You have. Ah, okay. No, you have. I will I will remind you. You remember when you worked with Rajiv? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, for that particular, I forgot that name of uh, that we used to do that activity, that fun activity. And I think we were also uh, pairing for one particular things I actually forgot that, but you created that uh, screens for yes, yes. creative uh, uh, yeah. meetings over there. No? That's right. So you ensure that the format remain consistent. Okay. You remember that the format, yes. even the internal things, what are you asking the question that is different, but the format you kept the consistent. That is the consistency. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. And small things also, you know, like, for example, you know, even if you're looking at your browser window right now, where is that cross button that is placed? Everywhere, if you look, it is always, most of the times, if you see it is right. Okay. Unless, of course, you're using your Mac systems, then you have a thing. But then if you're using, say, Chrome, you would always see, you know, your even your Google Meet that you say you will have a cross at the top or more on the right hand side usually right yes it means we have to use the standards uh, standards actually no? yes standards and what? standards not within the product also but you have to keep an eye on the standards that are across the industry different yes, yes. products right so what is there what is that is trending okay and of course i'm not saying just follow those standards blindly you have to weigh those across with some of these principles that we have also seen right so we've understood we understand heuristics and we have to wait does that make sense or is there are they doing something wrong that is what we have to see before we uh start applying those standards yes, yes. so we know yeah. when you created those stuff that is the visual mm -hmm. consistency that is a functional yes. consistency because that is functioning equally like it's for the all the pages same and uh, then yes. also for the content consistency the question will be different but the format tone everything remains the same yes, yeah. yes okay even your shopping cart experiences right so you how do you really pick things and add to your shopping cart where is your shopping cart uh, positioned icon positioned on uh, interfaces and when you land up on a shopping cart what are the experiences that you get you know you can really add a few more things it is giving you what is the total cost and what are the discounts you can add a coupon so these are patterns when you say journey patterns that are there these are patterns that you would want to again refer to and these are again uh, consistencies and standards right you say oh i have to have a unique uh, experience so i will have a different uh, way of uh, shopping but then you are there is a trade-off that you are doing right you are expecting the user to explore for a certain time all of these so there are a lot of exp uh, examples that are there and uh, you can uh, bring those up because there are slides that i have uh, kept uh, ready for you you can just uh, you know create uh, add slides and you can add those examples here right um, yes. so yeah Great. So we looked at two of these principles today and uh, I would uh, really request everybody to spend some time before we meet again um, day before, uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, on Friday, uh, day after tomorrow and uh, bring up examples so that we can discuss and look at those. See to it that your examples are closest to the principle that we are talking about. Right. And it could relate to other uh, principles also that we have looked at in the past or we are going to be looking at in the future. But 
take examples that are closest to this principle and it is either failing or passing. Yeah? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Uh, okay. We are over time. Any, unless anybody has any quick point. Yeah, Nilesh, mm. you have to say something. <laughs> no, no. So Microsoft uh, uh, applications also uh, maintain a good internal consistency. Yeah. Hmm. Like look at PowerPoint. Like PowerPoint, uh, you, you open any application on Microsoft, so they have this design consistency across all applications. We are you mentioning the toolbars? Yeah. Okay, and the layouts. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's a great example. Uh, yes, so Rupali uh, Pravidan here. So this side is only for the consistency standard passed or fail bhi ho hai, uske liye bhi yaha pe dal sakte. Haan, yaha pe bhi dal sakte. Ye sirf mene aise rakha hai ki, you know, where to put a pass or a fail. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, so there are two slides that I have created for uh, mm -hmm. the first, the earlier principle and this one also. So please go ahead and... Yeah, add your examples. All right, so we are good. We, have, uh, we can close this call and we can meet again on Friday. Yeah? Sure. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank you.